All right. Hey guys. So the uh, the notes from five two the factors impacting population growth. Um, there's really not a lot to it. Uh, usually, usually when we do these in class together, um, I give you guys a blank copy under each, and we kind of like talk through them and and have kind of have you guys figure them out um, as we go. But so essentially, for human populations, you've got um, you've got two things: you've got fertility rate and you've got mortality rate. So fertility rate, as it says, is the rate at which a population is adding new members to its population. Okay. Um, and then mortality rate is the rate at which members of the population are dying off. Okay, so as you can see here, as the fertility rate goes up, population growth rate goes up. As the fertility rate drops, the population growth rate drops. So overall growth rate, the overall growth rate is a combination of the fertility rate and the mortality rate. Okay. The mortality rate, as the mortality rate goes up, people are, more people die, then the population growth rate drops because you're not adding as many people, well, you might be adding as many people, but more are dying. So the overall growth of the population isn't increasing as much as, as before. And then as the mortality rate drops, population growth rate increases because fewer people are dying. Okay, so, um, what are things that are going to impact the population growth rate? So these are things that will increase the growth rate. So the two ways that you can increase the growth rate, if you look over here, population growth rate goes up is fertil increase the fertility rate or decrease the mortality rate. Those are the two ways that you can overall increase the growth rate. So we've got uh, one of the big ones is advances in medicine. Okay, getting um, either getting access to or discovering new medicines um, helps lower the mortality rate. Um, so, for example, if you think about like if they're able to come up with a cure for cancer, okay, that would uh, something on that level would reduce the mortality rate considerably because there's a lot of people that die from cancer. Okay, now we're not talking about small scale things like. Um, I don't know, making a safer uh, seat belt in a car or something. Like, yeah, that might save some lives, but we're talking about like on a large scale, like overall population growth rate, not just, you know, not just a few hundred of people or whatever like that. We're talking on a, on a large scale. Okay. Um, B, improvements in nutrition. Improvements in nutrition, it can help prevent people from dying. So it could decrease the mortality rate. And it could also increase the fertility rate um, if, you know, if people are healthier, then they have fewer complications with, with pregnancies and things like that as well. Okay. Um, and improvements in nutrition. This, so another thing to keep in mind when we're talking about this, we're not talking about just United States. We're talking about worldwide. So improvements in nutrition can come in, in places too that have, um, you know, in, in kind of like third, you know, third world, very poor countries, uh, if you improve the nutrition there, you're getting a lot, you're going to decrease the mortality rate because not as many people are dying from poor nutrition and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, fertility or birthing advances. Um, so again, in, uh, poor countries, you know, the birthing, you know, being pregnant and, and having children is, um, in a lot of places is, can still be risky for women because of the lack of, um, the lack of uh, sort of like sanitary, um, like access to uh, medical supplies and, sanit and, and sanitary hospital areas and stuff like that. So um, D, improved sanitation. This is a big one, right? Improved sanitation, um, a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of, diseases and things are spread by poor sanitation, whether it's poor water sanitation or poor um, like handling of human waste, um, whether it's trash sanitation, anything like that. Like uh, if you remember from history, the bubonic plague, uh, one of the, one of the main ways it was spread was uh, rats um, 
and because they had a lot of rats in some of the main cities because of the poor sanitation, um, it spread really easily because there were, you know, hundreds of thousands of rats. So uh, sanitation is a big one. Food safety and quality, uh, that's not as big of a deal, but it can be, in, again, in, in some of the in poor areas, um, having, ac having access to food and then the quality of the food itself. Um, you know, having not only like enough food, but, but healthy food, um, which then prevents, you know, diseases and other things that can lower your, or increase your diseases and stuff that can increase your mortality rate. So, so having a uh, quality food uh, diet can lower your mortality rate. Um, and then access to fresh, clean water. Again, this kind of links with the sanitation that we just talked about. Uh, one of the, one of the top three, I think it's, I think it's number three cause of death in, um, in small children and poor economic like countries and stuff around, around the globe is, uh, essentially, uh, diarrhea. Uh, it's, it, it's brought on by, um, it, it's brought on by bacteria and stuff. And, and the reason that it, kills people is because a lot of times it comes from um from water that is that is unclean um people sharing water with it like the same waterways that that animals uh livestock and stuff like that uh that waste gets into it or even human human waste depending on the san like lack of sanitation and then what happens is um especially with young children because like, they're so small is um, as they have diarrhea, um, they they dehydrate easily because nothing like stays in them. So then, well, when you get dehydrated, what do you do? Well, you uh, you drink more water. But the problem is that the water is what's causing them to be sick. So it's like this vicious cycle of that. You know, they would have water, but the water's making them even more sick, and so they get uh, you know even sicker. You know, more diarrhea and uh, more dehydration until they, they essentially die of dehydration eventually. Um, so having access to clean fresh water is actually a really big deal in, in a lot of places around the world where they, where that's limited. Okay. Um, and then another one that can so is, is economic opportunities like immigration um, that can increase your population. It depends on the state, like in the United States, obviously we actually have a, um, a fairly decent sized immigration you know, people coming in. Um, so that can increase your population growth rate for a country. That doesn't really, that's a net zero, like globally, but for a population in a country, obviously that can change that. Okay. All right. Let's look at decreasing growth rate. Okay. We have, uh, one, one thing that can limit, oops, sorry. One thing that can limit growth rate is, is, there can be social laws like China had the uh, one child law to um, to sort of decrease their population growth and to control their population growth. Okay. Um, access to birth control. Again, that, that's not a big deal in a place like the United States, but if you're talking other, you know, um, economically depressed areas, that don't have access to birth control and where um, a lot of times in those places too, women's rights are essentially non-existent. Um, and so like not having access to birth control uh, means that um, they're going to have actually really high fertility rates in some of those areas. Okay. Uh, lack of food or poor food nutrition. So, um, oh shoot, sorry. The access to birth control would would decrease the growth rate. Um, not having access would increase it. So having access to it would decrease. If I didn't make that clear, okay. Uh, a lack of food or poor food nutrition. So this is really just the opposite of the food safety and quality up here, okay. Uh, so that would having a lack of food or poor food nutrition would decrease the growth rate. Um, Lack of adequate housing or living space. Uh, this is in, especially in poor areas where a lot of times they'll, they'll use their land, um, for growing food and things that they need to sustain themselves. 
Okay, so that could be a, that can be a big problem. Um, economic wealth and financial stability. There's actually an interesting correlation with economic wealth and the the wealthier the population, typically actually the lower the growth rate. You would think that like economic wealth would mean well they could have more kids or whatever, but what they find is that it's an, actually the opposite. It's it's the more economically well off a population is, um, the lower the growth rate actually is, the, the population growth rate. Okay. Um, a lack of natural resources leading to a poor economy can impact. So like if you if you don't have enough resources really just to support yourself and um you know, family and stuff like that, that can lead to like the natural resource part of it can lead to a uh, low uh, decreasing growth rate. Um, that could also be a lack of resources just to survive, you know. Um, another big one, war and conflict, obviously. There's a couple of ways. One, because if you've got war and conflict, people are dying. So that part of it. But then also war and conflict, again, especially in uh, poorer countries, um, has a huge impact on uh, food production and distribution uh, and stuff like that. It can lead to famine, um, which then again, you know, starvation, stuff like that will, will decrease the growth rate um, as well because you're increasing the mortality rate. Okay. And then disease. Uh, disease spreading, stuff like that can increase mortality rate uh, and would then de would overall decrease the population growth rate. Okay, so that's just really a, a real quick run through um, of the of that information. All right, if you have questions, as usual, just let me know. Talk to you guys later.